even with all of that, nobody knew what I was going through. Yeah, you were hiding you know? inside. Exactly, exactly. We're in the car, myself and Ming. And I'm like, what? You're kidding me. And then I start screaming. And she was like, Charmony, what is wrong with you? Should I pull over? So she pulled over. Now my kids are in the back seat. And I'm literally like, oh my God, oh my God. Like, literally, I could not speak. The person on that phone was my daughter. Oh my she God. says, I think you're my mom. Oh my God. And that's amazing because your mom loves to bake and she's super crafty in all of that. Yes, it, it's so funny how like we're literally before and after kids. Like yeah. <laughs> we're practically the same person. I know, and I'm, when I, she sent me the photo, she's like, I was like, can I see a photo? And you guys are like twins. Yes, and if you see my little, my baby brother, we're like triplets because we put all three of us together except he's six two. Oh my god, that is crazy. So I, she told me her story, and I would love to hear your story, your side of um, all of it. All of the great things that I did, all of the awards that I did, the concerts that I was in, my dad was never in the audience. Mm. You know, um, I went to modeling school, and I remember my mom had chemo the day before. Mm. She came to my graduation. Wow. You know, and I remember walking down the runway and seeing her and just the look on her face, like that is my fondest memory of my mom. Yeah. You know, because I, I don't have cancer, but you know, like my best friend has cancer. She told me how it feels after chemo. I remember my mom telling me that chemo, but you showed up for me. Yeah. Like despite however bad you felt that day, yeah. you showed up. For me. You know, and that again, I hold that near because my dad wasn't there. I don't even know where to begin. Well, first of all, thank you for the opportunity. I love what you're doing. Like I said, I've been watching your podcast on and off. And I I love the conversations. I love that you don't have a structured platform. And mm -hmm. you could just kind of go with the flow. Um, one of the things, like my biggest takeaway has been mm -hmm. the, um, how do you say, the common and un commonalities that we all from CI share. Yes. It just, it, it, it blows my mind in some of the conversations that you have. And I'm like, oh, I felt the same way. Oh, I experienced that too. It's, it's mind boggling. It really is. It really I'm is. I'm so happy. And I'm so happy for you to be here. And I really, really appreciate your support and watching them. And I remember you jumping on, I think one of the lives I did with Gary and you're yep. like, yes, that's yep. how we felt. And like the juxtaposition of how we felt having to be a certain way in school and then mm -hmm. going home and being another way. So I thank yep. you so much for that feedback and your support, you know, CI Pride, it's always like that. Absolutely, absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. So welcome Art & Hustle Gallery of Conversations and introduce yourself and tell the people a little bit about yourself. Okay, I am Charmini Calder, um, Caribbean American. Um, my mom is from the Virgin Islands. My dad's a Bayesian American, so grew up in that Caribbean um, household. Um, we moved to CI, I think in 1981, somewhere around there, mm -hmm. um, coming from Queens. Mm -hmm. um, we were the only Black family on my block for years, mm -hmm. like literally from both sides of Kanakwat, we were the only Black family. Wow. Mm -hmm. um, I run my own business on the yes, side, then I work single. for... I am single, 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 single. No. <laughs> no, no complications. The adults. I am a grandmother. I have three grandkids. You want to talk about upbringings and things like that. And I see that that's, you know, one of the conversations that you have a lot. Yeah. Um, so let's see. Childhood. Traumatic. Like one word, traumatic. Oh, no. Um, oh, no. That's, I mean, that's an underlining theme of I mean, honestly, because I had a traumatic childhood. So I always love to hear how how theirs was because mine was, mm -hmm. I just felt like I was alone in my own struggles and my own prison that I just never talked about anything. So this is right. 
unpacking my life. And I love that people can come on here and share how how they went through it and how they got through it and the tips and tricks. Mm-hmm. So thank you for sharing. Yeah, I, mm-hmm. um, coming from Queens, um, not necessarily a, a, a strict household. Um, I will say, and I say it often, I come from a two parents, parents list home. Mm. Um, what I mean, yes, I had the ideal family. You know, my dad was there, my mom was there, my siblings was there. I am, what, there's eight of us. Mm. Um, so a huge family, you know, yeah. we are, uh, the joke has always been that we are the Black Brady Bunch. Yeah. Because when my parents met, they both had their own kids prior and then along came me. Mm-hmm. Um, so a lot of different personality integrations, you know, integrated with each other. So were you the youngest? Um, I was the youngest and then my dad got remarried and then I had a sister and a brother added on. So it became eight, four girls, four boys. Okay. Um, so, oh my God. Who are you closest to? I was, I am, who am I closest to? Or maybe neither? My, no, no, no. Um, parents or siblings? Parents. Um, none. Yeah, that's what I mean. My mom died when I, yeah. Uh, my mom died when I was young. My dad is still alive. He's still in New York. He's in um, Garden City Park. Mm-hmm. Um, our relationship is, that's my dad. Mm-hmm. You know, I love you because you're my dad. Mm-hmm. Um, how did it become like that? I think it was always that way. Mm-hmm. My dad is a pastor. Um, so publicly, everyone thought like, you know, the great parents, you know, you yeah. have the great dad, you have a great yeah, like relationship. The surface looks good. And how uh-huh. old were you when your mom had passed away? I was 12. Oh, okay. Okay. Um, I'm trying to, all right, let me try to put in chronological order. So we yeah. moved to CI. Um, you know, like I said, the only black family coming from, you know, Queens. Now all of a sudden I'm in this huge diversity. Mm-hmm. Not necessarily a culture shock, but it was shocking because I had never been discriminated again, you know, mm-hmm. and I'm a kid. I was like seven when we moved. Mm-hmm. Um, so, you know, talking to 10 people and them not responding was like, wait, what? Mm-hmm. But then as we matriculated through school, the diversity didn't matter. Like it didn't, it didn't matter what color you were, what race you were, what nationality you were, what color your hair was. Everyone would just mold it together. Yeah. But on my block, and um, I forget who it was you spoke to, talked about the segregation in CI. Yes. And when she was saying it, I was like, oh my God, like we really were the only black people, not just were we the only black family on our block, we had the biggest lot. We had the maybe biggest was, house, the biggest was, property. Uh, podcast was Sunrise. Yep, that's what it was. Right? That's what it was. And as I was listening to that podcast, I began to think about our neighborhood. So, like I said, we were the only Black family on our block for years. Mm-hmm. If you go over one block to Allward, it was um, mixed, Blacks and Spanish. Yeah. On your block, in that little, like, you, yeah. you had the Asians, you had the Indians, you had some Italians. So mm-hmm. when she said that, I started thinking, like, we really were segregated in that little patch of CI. Yeah. You know, just, yeah. it's it's absolutely crazy. You yeah. know, here we are, the only Black family, my next door neighbors, they have, you know, this huge barn with all these horses and animals. You go to the other end, they've got peacocks. Like, it was just, again, wow. culture shock. <laughs> wow. Culture shock. Mm-hmm. You know, and then we were on the side of Connecticut State Park. Mm-hmm. So, you know, you walk through the park, you've got all the wildlife in the winter. The you know, deers I never are do that. Are I you serious? Think, like, I've never been there. Get out of here. Yeah. Okay. Yes. <laughs> On our side of Connecticut, you yeah. had Connecticut State Park. Yeah, I knew the and park was there, but for some reason, I just never walked in there. Oh my God. Absolutely beautiful. Absolutely I'm going to have to go. <laughs> <laughs> and you know, it was crazy because again, I'm coming from Queens. Our first winter, there's deer in our backyard. Like, wait, mm-hmm. what? Yeah. I, wait why are there deer like literally walking on our patio yeah um so it was it was definitely a culture shock in hindsight like my siblings was mad to move to CI Mm -hmm. I am grateful for that opportunity Mm -hmm. and I say that because one of the diversity um it molded me to who I am now Mm -hmm. and it taught me how to be let's say a chameleon in the room yeah. So I can sit and I can talk with the hobnobs and the snobs and go talk to the bum at the same time yeah. without losing who I am. If yeah. that yeah. makes any sense whatsoever. Totally. totally. Um, 
the the challenge though was on the weekends going back to Queens. Mm. So I became the black white girl. You know, mm-hmm. you're the blackest yes. white girl that's, I ever met. Yeah, you know? that's what that's what Sunrise had the problem. They're like, why do you speak white? And she's like, what do you mean? Mm-hmm. You know? Right, because we didn't see the difference. So I learned how to mix it. So mm-hmm. on the weekends when I'd go to Queens, you know, I was, hey, what's up? Yeah. I'm Mickey, what's yeah, going yeah. on? You know, <laughs> yeah. Monday morning, I'm like, hey, good morning. How you doing? You know, like yeah, you had like, to learn you had how to, to play the it. role. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, but that made me who I am. And I, that, Okay. Okay. So it made me to be the adult that I am now, Mm. Um, you know, graduating high school. um, I went to school for restaurant management and I work for, uh, I don't, am I, I can't say names, can I? I, I owe say everything. (laughs) Okay. So I worked for Barbara Smith, right? Mm -hmm. Um, First black model for Wilhelmina. Um, Beautiful lady. Absolutely Mm -hmm. loved her, her husband, her family. Absolutely loved them. So here's this opportunity for this girl, you know, primarily from Queens. You know, yes, I lived in CI to sit like one of my best experiences, my 21st birthday, mm-hmm. Nell Carter saying happy birthday to me. Like, what? right, exactly, what? exactly. Oh my God, you know, See, that, that's, that's what we love. We love like these <laughs> random stories that I would never know. It just, that whole experience mm-hmm. was just beautiful. Yeah. You know, now I'm not saying that had I been raised in Queens my whole entire life that I would have not had the opportunity. I may have, but I would not have been the person that I was. Like to be to be able to interact with celebrities in just a mellow, nonchalant way. Like yeah. you know, I was like, oh, oh, my God, yeah. oh my God. The yeah. only person that ever did that too was Lorenz Tate. Like he walked in the door, and I was like, oh. <laughs> and the guy that I was working with, Danny, tapped me, and I walked to the bathroom because, like, you know, we're not yeah. supposed to do that. You know, that that motto, what happens in the house stays in the house, mm-hmm. was something I never said to my kids. Like, mm-hmm. because that withholds, that keeps you from saying things. Yeah, it's a secret. So, right. And, you know, that, that if walls can talk theory, Jesus, yeah. the walls yeah. have so much to say. Yeah. But anywho, so to get straight to the point, I was molested from the time that I was six to the time that I was 12. Mm. Um, during that time, my mom had cancer. Mm-hmm. Um, I gave birth to my first child in 1987. Mm-hmm. So here I am in Reed, eighth grade, pregnant. Really? Exactly. Really? Yeah, you, no, you, I, you felt that, right? Like, yeah, who remembers I, that? I never knew that. Yep. And then I disappeared for a little while. Oh, wow. You know, we emerged yeah. in ninth, like middle of ninth grade. Yeah. You know, because I had this kid. How old? Um, what, what age is that? For, like, I was 15? 12. 12? Oh, shit. Mm-hmm. <gasps> right. Oh, shit. Right. You know, so my mom died in February of 1987. Mm-hmm. I gave birth to my daughter in June of 87. Oh, my God. Um, now, that's, that's trauma. Yeah. Right. So you have all of these years of these things happening to me, mm-hmm. but I couldn't tell anybody. It was yeah. a joke. Oh, like, my God. No support. There was no support there. Nope. None at all. Um, there was an English teacher in Reed, um, Miss Johnson. Mm-hmm. I had Miss Johnson. I had Miss Gittins. Now, when my mom died, I didn't know that my dad told the school, but I guess you know he told him because I wasn't coming to school or whatever. Um, when I came back after my mom died, uh, Miss Gittins had kind of talked to me about losing a parent, and you know she was very very supportive. Um, if you ever need to talk to me, I'm here. But Ms. Johnson, it was something different about our interaction. Mm-hmm. Um, it was almost like she knew that things was happening to me, yeah. but didn't know how to address it. Mm-hmm. I told my dad that I'm pregnant. Um, I put it in a note. Like I couldn't even verbally say, I wrote a note and I stuck it in his closet. Yeah. And I was in the bedroom when he came in. Mm-hmm. I heard him open the paper and then he just comes out crying, mm-hmm. you know, um, gave me a hug and left Mm -hmm. you know um how did I feel about that I don't know I don't know yeah Yeah. the the downfall or the kickback was people not believing me yeah like I'm naming names like names not it was more than one person I'm naming names I'm telling you when what where the the how often it happened 
you know, oh my God. I'm giving you details. This, this is, is I'm, 12, I'm a child. And this is at 12 I'm, years old. You told him you're pregnant and you told him you were molested and no one's saying anything, supporting it. You're naming everything and they just are just, nope. wow. Nope. Because I was such a tomboy, I was, you know, conversations was, oh, that's because she's always running around those boys. She's fast. How am I fast? Like, yeah. you're just what, being, do I, what do I you're know? Being, you're being a kid. Right, right. Um, the, yeah. um, and it took me years to really be able to comfortably have the conversation, you yeah. know, because again, what happens in this house stays in this house. Yes. You know, it's, shh, don't tell anybody, yeah, you know. Don't tell anybody, just keep it a secret, be a mm-hmm, good girl. Mm-hmm. Right. So here we are. My mom died, like I said, in February. Um, let's say April or so. I remember being at my aunt's house, my uncle walking past touching my stomach and going is she pregnant and everyone's like looking and I was maybe about four months or so when Mm -hmm. you know it was like hey she's pregnant but um you know so now conversations are happening now my aunt who this I have double cousins so my aunt and my dad married my father and his sister married my mother and her brother Wait, does that what? make sense? So <laughs> every time I try to explain this, it's yeah. so it's weird. So my mom and my aunt were best friends. Yeah. They married each other's brother. Okay. 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 Um, so double cousins. Mm-hmm. Right. Um, so my aunt and I were actually really close. Mm-hmm. And you know, when my mom died, we got, you know, closer. Mm-hmm. Now the Bottom dropped out when I said, it's your son who got me pregnant. <gasps> right. So mm-hmm. um, I wish I could remember the whole conversation. I remember we stayed the night at her house. She woke me up like, what, let's say two o'clock in the morning, tells him to come in the kitchen. Mm-hmm. You know, um, she sits down and she's like, let's talk. Mm-hmm. And she grabs me and I, I'm big kid. I'm sitting on her lap, you know, and I'm telling her what happened. And mm-hmm. I mean, the way that she boohooed was just like, I don't know, like I felt it. I felt it mm-hmm. down to my soul. Yeah. So not you, only- You need that. You need right. that support. Cause that, that kind of cry, I honestly, I don't think I really got that. Maybe I did in the past, but I didn't really receive it. I only got mm-hmm. that this year. Wow. From wow. somebody else. Yeah. Wow. So the yeah, person so- that you got pregnant with was one of the molesters. Of, I'm mm-hmm. right. Was one of my cousins. You know, so, um, you know, as time, you know, goes on, the relationship between she and I never changed. Mm -hmm. And I mean, she's not here anymore, but I respect that because now I became the outsider in my my entire family. Oh my God. Like I'm a kid. I just lost my mom. Yeah. I didn't get time to grieve my mother. And you're pregnant. You know, go like, and you're on the doctor tells me, and I'm like, what? Yeah. I don't even know what that means. Yeah. You know whatever yeah. um so I ended up having my daughter premature uh, I think I was like 27 weeks or whatever when I had her mm-hmm. um now the one thing that I will say is God had his hand on my life when I didn't know who God was yeah and I say that because at that age mm-hmm. you having a child yeah. you can lose your life like your body is not prepared yeah. it's not built for that yet exactly you know so um, July 4th, I'm in Stony Brook University. Um, I had, they put me there for like a couple of days because they thought that I was going to miscarry or whatever. Um, my dad comes, his girlfriend comes. You heard the word girlfriend, right? Um, my mom just died a couple months before. Okay. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. Um, and my aunt is wrong. Mm-hmm. That ends up having my daughter, like I said, prematurely. Mm-hmm. Um, because she was a preemie, you know, they kept her in the hospital. Now, social workers have to come in, right? Because mm-hmm. I'm a kid. Yeah. So days before I actually had my daughter, yeah. I had spoke to a social worker and she told me options. Mm-hmm. And I said, I'm going to give her up for adoption. I don't want the baby, mm-hmm. you know? Um, when I had that conversation with my dad, oh, I was like the demon child. Like, you're not going to do that. And, you know, this is family and we've got to keep together. I'm 12. Yeah. I, 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 and again, I say God had his hand in my life because the conversation I had with my dad mm-hmm. was not a conversation that would come from the mouth of a child. 
Mm-hmm. But I remember saying to him, you want me to raise something, which means every day I have to be reminded of what I went through. Yeah. Now, my dad and I never discussed the mol- molestation. Like, yeah. We never had that conversation Yeah, at all, ever. ever. I'm almost 50. Oh my We've God. We've never had that conversation. Oh my God. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, so the social worker, again, we go through all this. I have, uh, I have my daughter. I get back home. You know, they send a lady from the adoption agency over at Catholic Children's Society or whatever it was. Mm-hmm. And she's going over the process. And my dad is like, well, you can't sign anything. She says she's the parent. She has legal right. Despite her age, she gave birth to this child. Mm-hmm. Fine. Wow. Dad's livid, whatever. In the adoption um, forms, I tell her no one in my family is allowed to adopt her. Nobody. Mm-hmm. Her record has to be sealed. Now, I didn't tell her, the, she told me about the record being sealed part, but I told her about no one in my family, no contact, yeah. you know? Um, and it had such a beautiful ending, but anyway. Yeah. Um, so during that time, my dad was trying to adopt her. Oh, he tried to have his girlfriend. What? He tried to have his aunt, my aunt do it. Oh my God. Like, and I just, even now as an adult, I still can't understand that. Yeah. I know like my dad is, everything is about family. I, I, I get that. But this is kind of a different, kind of different. Yeah. Um, so anywho, life goes on. You know, I go through high school. I matriculate through high school. Um, I hide my pain through makeup, music, mm-hmm. yeah. Um, yeah. and art, like yeah. creating stuff. That was my, my, my hiding spot. Yeah. Because you can't, my makeup, you can't see that I'm sad mm-hmm. because I'm making myself look, look so pretty. You yeah, know, that's, through my that's art, one of my, my questions, pain. like, how did art save you? And that's how it got you through. Um, music was the first thing that got me through. Yeah. Like, I would lay in my room for hours, you know, my little cassette tape and my headphones for hours just listening to music. Music was my, my breakaway, you mm-hmm. know, and I listened to different genres of music. So, mm-hmm. you know, the soulful, soulful music, you know, the jazz, the, the, the country music, um, of course, you know, R&B, those type of things. But mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I found music was my escape. Reading mm-hmm. was my escape. But I love to read. There's a book that I read over and over again that Miss Gittins gave me when we were in Read. Um, it's called Friends. And I can't remember the author, but I read that book over and over again because these are two girls mm-hmm. who had traumatic childhoods. Mm-hmm. So reading their stories, oh. I won't say it, it kind of, I guess, comforted me, Yeah, you know, yeah. to know that I wasn't alone because I couldn't tell anybody, yeah. anything, anybody. Yeah. you know, nobody in CI knew about my daughter no. until 2010. Oh, wow. 2010. She was born in 87. Wow. So there were some people who knew, like, you know, I disappeared for a little while and yeah. like just never really connected the dots. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Mm -hmm. um when I had a conversation with one girl that I grew up with she said you know what you're right you weren't there for this you weren't there for that Mm -hmm. you know but anyway um so okay where are we now so I I had her I'm back in high school um again no one through high school knew Mm -hmm. you know the music department was my hideaway you know from marching band to chorus like that was my hideaway yeah um I played volleyball for a little while um, but Mr. Paris, mm. not Parisi, because I have a great relationship with him too, but Mr. Mm. Paris, the music teacher, oh, okay. he had did this, um, we had did this music theory thing and we had to sit in his classroom, lights was off, our heads was down and he was playing music. Mm-hmm. And then when the music stopped, we had to write how we felt. Oh. That was the hardest thing because I don't remember what it was he played, but it brought back so many mm. memories. Yeah. Like, when I tell you I boohooed, Miss Armstrong yeah. had to say, what's wrong? Like, yeah. you know, what, what, what's going on? And I began to tell her and then I stopped. Yeah. Um, but she was still comforting um, yeah. at that time. But still, it wasn't like, you know, Charmaine, you need to see someone, your parents are sending you counseling, whatever, whatever. Yeah. It was pushed under the rug, yeah. right? Yeah, it's always pushed under um, the rug. I'll deal with it later. Just hide it. Let's right. Get Let's right. get through the day. Right, you know, and then you know, some cultures are yeah. You don't need to see a therapist. Yeah, that's, uh, what, that's what, for white that's people. That's for the Caucasian people, <laughs> right? <laughs> that's right, for white right. rich people. Like to me, like exactly. that was never something I I should be going to do. Or anybody suggested that. Yeah, yeah, um, and like my caseworker did suggest, and she was a black lady. And the one thing her name is Pauline Casey. The one thing that oh, well, I remember her name. 
um, that I loved when she came to visit me in the hospital was she was real and very transparent. Mm-hmm. Like she said, you know, if I was your father, I would have beat, I don't know if I can cuss. I would have yeah, beat his ass. Yeah. Family, it's the family or not, I would have beat his ass. Yeah. She's like, there's no way that that man should be walking. And the Twelve fact that he old. was, yeah. right. And I think he was 18 mm-hmm. at the time. So, so you, you should have been in jail. Like for real. Jail. Really yeah, yeah. So I get pregnant again at 16. Mm-hmm. You know, I have my son. Um, that was a whole another thing with my parents. My dad gets remarried in 88. My mom just died in 87. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So I, I didn't get to grieve my mom. Yep. Then I had, I give birth to a child, you know, birds and bees was never explained to me. Mm-hmm. You know, I have doctors telling me, you know, what childbirth is like and so forth and so on. Mm-hmm. You know, nurses telling me what aftercare is like, you know. Um, <clears throat> I tell my brother who's in the army, everything. Mm-hmm. And he was angry, which you know is expected. Um, and he was more upset that my dad didn't do anything. Yeah. You know, my other brother, because I journaled a lot, had read my journal. Oh. So he knew stuff. Yeah. You know, um, I remember when I was they bring me down into um L and D, labor and delivery, and my brother was there. Mm-hmm. And like, I've never seen him so sad, oh. you know, like that, that hurt, that yeah. hurt so, so, so much. Yeah. Um, but now, like I said, I have this child, my mom just died. My family is now, I won't say against me. Mm-hmm. I literally became the black sheep mm-hmm. from aunt, uncles, cousins, grand- I was the black sheep. So now music was mm-hmm. my, my getaway because yeah. I can put on music and just, Zone everything out. Yeah, you just Tune escape the whole, whole world out, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, so my dad gets remarried. And it's crazy because my sister, well, Medina, and I just had this conversation last month. Mm-hmm. And she says to me, like, I'm, I'm visiting her in Georgia. She says, you know, I am so you know, sorry. Cooper? that. Yep. Don't tell me you didn't know that was my sister. I did not know <laughs> Yes, 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 yes. Oh, I oh did my not. God, but you used to come to the house. Yeah, like me and her f- were friends. Yeah. Right. <laughs> you come to our house. Well, see, this is the thing. Like, I, I have really bad memories. So things would be like missing from my leg. But I was friends with her. But no, I did yep. not know that. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> so um, we had this conversation and she says, you know, I'm sorry that we put you through what we put you through. Mm-hmm. What do you mean? She says, I can't imagine my mom dying, my dad brings a whole new family into my mom's house. She says, you know, it didn't like hit until later on in life. I can't understand how you were the way that you were. Mm -hmm. Um, And I said that my way of dealing with it was music and never being home. Yeah. And she was like, yeah, you were hardly home. I I couldn't, I couldn't because it's just too much, way too much in such a short period of time Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know um but that that apology she's like you know our parents was wrong for that she goes they really should have waited they were absolutely wrong for that and she didn't know until 2010 what had happened to me she knew (gasps) that I had a kid really she didn't know until 2010 (gasps) she I mean she knew that I had a kid yeah but never anything after that because her mom didn't tell her everything else yeah you know um I don't know why she didn't or whatever, Mm -hmm. but now at this time, again, her mom, my parents, they're dating. Mm -hmm. Her mother didn't have a good uh, outlook for me. Mm. You know, she kind of like, was kind of down, like, you know, down on me. You know, lady, you don't even know me, whatever. And you wanted Um, to adopt my child. So how are you acting this way towards me? Like what? That makes no sense. Um, And, you know, again, you know, I'm not making excuses. She was thrown into an awkward situation. Yeah. You know, the guy you're dating, his wife just died. His 12 year old daughter is pregnant. Like, and you guys are about to get married. Like, yeah. it, it was a lot for everyone at that time, you yeah. know? And again, I'm not making excuses because we, everyone had their part, yeah. you know? Mm-hmm. Um, so again, Medina and I have this conversation and she's like, I'm giving her details. And she says, I didn't know that. Mm-hmm. She's like, Wow. Yeah. She says, you really went through a lot. A she lot. says, and 
me being in the house didn't even know half of that stuff yeah yeah you know like her bedroom was really, literally diagonal from my room yeah. you know what I mean mm -hmm. um but again that's that what happens here stays here you know don't say nothing shush mm -hmm. um you know so anyway matriculate through high school I had my son at 16 um his dad and I were best of friends you mm -hmm. know mm -hmm. again that 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 tight circle he was <laughs> My cousin who molested me, best friend. Oh, <gasps> no. Right. Oh, my God. Oh, my yeah, God. Like yeah, like that circle. Yeah. Um, And he knew about it, but it did not change mm -hmm. the way he felt about me. And okay. here, I mean, we're not together. We are still the best of friends. Like, yeah. when I was in Atlanta, we sat in the phone. We, you know, talk. You yeah. know, we, I'm going to say maybe three, four times a year, we talk. And mm -hmm. like, for long hours at a time, you know, mm -hmm. but it's, it's like we'd never miss a beat. You know, I, we have a great friendship, which is phenomenal, mm -hmm. despite everything, you know, yeah. despite my cousin bragging to him. Oh, I had, I had Nikki. I had, her. I know what she's like. <sighs> oh my God. Oh my I mean, God. when he asked me, I didn't want to answer, but mm -hmm. I, I did, mm -hmm. you know, but it did not change mm -hmm. our relationship. And I think that that speaks highly of his character. Yeah. Um, so yeah, matriculate through high school you know, couldn't wait to get out of the house. You know, my dad's thing was after you graduate, you got to go, mm -hmm. get a job and go. There was no planning. There mm -hmm. was no, you know, you got to go to college. You got to do this. 18. Just took and peace out. Yeah. Yeah, pretty much. Um, but going, like living in CI, I knew a lot of people. A lot of people knew me, but mm -hmm. I really didn't hang around with a lot of people. Yeah. You know, I didn't have that that tight circle. You know, yeah, I hung on the wall in between classes like everybody else did, you know, by the little theater. Yeah. Um, but because of the things that was going on at home, mm -hmm. I didn't want to get too close to people because I didn't want them to know. Yeah, yeah. You know, mm -hmm. um, and it, it's crazy because where we lived in, in CI, we were so far away from everyone else. Yeah, yeah. But like my friends that were lived in Carlton Park and the New Z, they would get on bikes to come all the way down to old connect quad and hang yeah. out at my house <laughs> you know um after school what was the cartoon tiny tune adventures mm -hmm. everyone was at my house watching tiny tune adventures you know mm -hmm. here you have a bunch of high schoolers scrambling around the tv to watch this cartoon yeah but even with all of that nobody knew what mm -hmm. i was going through yeah you were hiding you know? in sight exactly exactly um one of the things that I'm very grateful for about CI are the friendships, because even as an adult, mm -hmm. I had a conversation with a guy that I dated in junior high school, maybe a month ago, and it just blew my mind. Like, yeah. I mean, again, randomly throughout the years, because of social media, yeah. we've talked, but I was just like, wow, like, you've known me since yeah. I was 13. Yeah. Like, wow. Yeah. You know, um, I have friends that I still talk to, and like, we go back like Barbie and Ken. Mm -hmm. you know middle uh, elementary school mm -hmm. you know like Mulvey elementary school yeah so yeah Mulvey. I, I, yeah, that's I, where I went yeah you know I love the fact that we're still connected maybe we would not all be so connected if it wasn't for social media mm -hmm. you know we would have our clicks with a few people that we know whatever but not just the fact that we're connected we've never let life separate us yeah. no matter what we've gone through mm -hmm. seen and unseen we can still just click like mm -hmm. old times. So again, living in CI has taught character, mm -hmm. has taught us how to how to be in multiple worlds. Mm -hmm. You know, like I can hang around with nerds and yeah. then I can hang around with, you know, yeah, like a chameleon. And so yeah, exactly. And I owe a lot of that to CI. You know, again, Senator is just talking about the whole um segregation thing, which really began to make me think. Mm -hmm. about how segregated we were like I, I used the, our block the way that we were set up on the block mm -hmm. like we were really segregated within our own community mm -hmm. then you had Carlton Park so it was like economically this is where these people belong but then mm -hmm. right behind that they put the new D so it was like you have the lower class uh, blacks here and then five blocks over you have the middle class Mm -hmm. You know, then when we, where we were on the complete opposite side, because we were in, you know, the white part yeah. of CI, mm -hmm. we were still segregated within that white part. Like my neighbors didn't talk to us for years. Yeah. For years. And yeah, like, I like, barely talked to any of my neighbors. Mm -hmm. <laughs> barely. How, how is that? How is that? And then like on your block, you guys had the most cultural, that mm -hmm. little you had the most 
cultural diversity just in that one span. Yeah. You know, so it's just, it's, it's, it's crazy. Um, but then like, even let's say when the whole Rodney King incident happened, we went in high school, we didn't have those crazy riots. We were like, man, whatever. That's, that's yeah, we're like, we're, we're fine here. We love everybody here. <laughs> right. We've never had that issue. Um, one of the things that I remember was we had, um, beauty bringing unity to you yes yes I and was part of that. we went you were part of that too mm -hmm. See, that. awesome we went to i think it was bay point blue point or something somewhere out by like montauk or whatever and it was only two black people in the entire school mm -hmm. and as you know we sat and we had our conversations they were talking about how people were burning stuff on their lawn and their parents was resilient like we're not leaving yeah wow that like blew my mind because i'm like wow it's like segregation like we're still living in that i thought that was you know things that happened yeah, like i past. thought that was that was like done with like right mm -hmm, mm -hmm. but not even just that um i was hanging out off of lowell avenue yeah and i i don't remember who it was i was walking with but we were walking and we're getting ready across the street and a family of caucasians pull up they look at us and you hear click 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 and we both looked at each other like they just locked their door oh like, it just, that that really blew my mind i remember having conversations with my brother mm -hmm. and he's like you didn't know he was like we are really not wanted here he says i don't i don't know what world you live in he was like yeah. but we they don't want us in this area they don't want yeah. us in this neighborhood yeah but again it blew my mind because in school we all got along it yeah. did not matter yeah. who yeah. you were I, how I smart felt, you were how I dumb felt you this, were i felt the same way because i felt like you know our school everybody was mixed and we accepted each other all my friends were mixed colors like to me race was not an issue to me but i did see it when because my parents had the restaurant in Hong Kong. Well, i would see it over there right with people. and then when i got older i thought racism was like done and then i would mm -hmm. go visit florida and then i would have like all these people say racist remarks at me and i'm like I'm, I graduated college and I'm, you know, whatever age and this is still going on. Like to me, it was right. like mind blowing that it's still going on, but mm -hmm, yeah, it's still mm -hmm. going on. We're almost 50. Right. Like go figure. Um, so like for my kids though, like sometimes I won't say that I regret, I wish that I had, would have been able to give them the opportunities I had, mm -hmm. you know, but I didn't have the money that my parents had. Um,